The siege is on. The North Vietnamese launch a massive artillery attack. The Americans counter with record air strikes and artillery, and the B-52s start their aerial bombardment. U.S. commanders predict a major North Vietnamese offensive just before the Lunar New Year on January 30th, or just after it. This could develop into the biggest confrontation of the war. The weather is on the side of the North Vietnamese. Communist gunners time their attacks to take advantage of the mist closing in on the airfield that hampers American planes from striking back. January 29th. American intelligence reports presence of a fourth North Vietnam regular division in the Khe San area, bringing the total estimated enemy strength in the area to approximately 40,000 regular troops. Half of these appear poised for the attack on the garrison. General Westmoreland positions his reserves of about 15,000 army troops plus a 5,000 man marine regiment at Phu Bai, about 60 miles southwest of Khe San. In uh, early February, uh, the enemy again tried to take uh, the H-61 complex. However, this time uh, they made an effort on a, its twin sister, H-61A. The attack on uh, that hill uh, was repelled uh, through the use of uh, not only the supporting arms, artillery, air, but also, uh, as with every other attack on the perimeter, by the organic infantry weapons. 81 millimeter mortars, 3.5 rockets, M79, machine guns and mines and every other uh, weapon available to an infantry battalion. February 10th, the North Vietnamese Communist Party newspaper boasts that the U.S. faces a defeat as disastrous as that suffered by the French at the NBN Phu. There is growing concern over the fate of the Marine garrison as the U.S. press also revives the specter of Dien Bien Phu. At stake now is more than a key military stronghold. The communists are out to inflict heavy casualties on the American troops with a major victory so that the U.S. would enter negotiations on terms favorable to Hanoi. <laughs>